Today, we're talking about something that's both fascinating and incredibly dangerous. Composition C4, or simply C4. You've probably seen it in movies. The brick-like explosive that heroes and villains alike love to use for blowing up doors, bridges, or sometimes entire buildings. In action films, it's often portrayed as this magical, unstoppable force that detonates with just the push of a button. But in real life, C4 has a much more interesting and surprisingly controlled story. It's not the kind of explosive that goes off if you drop it or light it on fire. And that's one of the reasons militaries rely on it. So how does this stuff actually work? Let's take a closer look at what's inside C4, why it's so stable, and what really has to happen before it explodes. Right here on History of Simple Things. C4 belongs to a group of explosives known as plastic explosives. That doesn't mean it's made of plastic, but rather that it has a clay-like texture that can be molded into different shapes. This makes it incredibly versatile. You can press it into crevices, wrap it around objects, or form it into a specific shape to focus its blast. C4's main explosive ingredient is RDX, short for Research Department Explosive, a powerful military-grade compound. On its own, RDX is already a potent explosive, but in pure form, it's also sensitive to impact. To make it safer and more usable, RDX is combined with plasticizers, binders, and sometimes oils that give C4 its putty-like consistency and remarkable stability. The end result is a material that can be handled, transported, and even subjected to rough conditions without risk of accidental detonation. At its core, C4 works because of chemistry, specifically the rapid decomposition of RDX molecules into hot gases under extreme conditions. When detonated, RDX undergoes a process called detonation decomposition. The chemical bonds in RDX break apart in an incredibly short amount of time, releasing enormous amounts of heat and expanding gases almost instantly. This rapid expansion creates a shockwave that travels faster than the speed of sound, and that's what does the real damage. The binder and plasticizer components in C4 don't contribute much to the explosion itself. Their role is mainly to hold everything together and make the explosive safer to handle. One of the reasons C4 is so widely used is that it's unusually stable for such a powerful explosive. You can drop it, step on it, or even shoot it, and it won't go off. It also won't ignite from open flames or from being baked in the sun. This stability comes from the fact that RDX needs an extremely high level of shock energy to trigger detonation, far more than everyday accidents can provide. That's why C4 requires a detonator to set it off. Without a detonator, it's just an inert lump of putty-like material. This quality is essential in combat zones, where explosives have to be transported and stored without constant fear of accidental blasts. To make C4 explode, you need a detonator, typically a blasting cap, connected to a power source or a time trigger. The blasting cap contains a small amount of a much more sensitive explosive, like PETN or lead azide, which can be set off by an electric charge or a mechanical strike. When the blasting cap detonates, it produces a shock wave strong enough to trigger the RDX inside the C4. This sets off the chain reaction that turns the solid explosive into an expanding mass of high temperature gas in microseconds. Depending on how the C4 is shaped and positioned, this blast can be directed for cutting through steel, demolishing structures, or blasting open terrain. C4 is a favorite in military engineering because it's both powerful and adaptable. 
soldiers can mold it into shape charges that concentrate the explosion into a narrow jet, capable of piercing armor or reinforced concrete. It can also be spread into thin sheets for controlled demolition work, where precision is just as important as raw power. Beyond the battlefield, C4 has also been used in highly controlled demolition jobs, where the goal is to bring down structures quickly and safely. Its stability and predictable performance make it ideal for tasks where timing and placement are everything. When C4 detonates, the shock wave and heat are intense. The gases produced can reach temperatures of over 4,900 degrees Celsius, and the blast wave can travel at around 8,000 meters per second. This combination of heat, speed, and pressure can cut through metal, pulverize concrete, and create lethal overpressure in enclosed spaces. But here's something important. C4 isn't about fireballs like in the movies. Real explosions from C4 are often less about flames and more about the shockwave's sheer destructive force. Hollywood adds the fireballs for dramatic effect, but in reality, the blast is almost instantaneous, leaving behind debris, pressure damage, and sometimes very little visible flame. Despite its destructive potential, C4 is not easy for an untrained person to misuse. The need for a specific detonator and the knowledge of how to position it means it's not something you can just light and run. Even if someone got their hands on C4 without the proper triggering device and the understanding of how detonation works, it's essentially harmless putty. This is one reason militaries prefer it over more sensitive explosives. It significantly reduces the risk of accidental detonation or theft, leading to immediate danger. C4 is one of the most effective and reliable explosives ever developed, combining raw power with remarkable stability. Its secret lies in its chemistry, the RDX inside, ready to release a massive burst of energy when triggered, and in its design which makes it safe to handle until the exact moment you need it. While it's an icon of cinematic explosions, the real story is one of careful engineering, controlled energy, and specialized use. It's a reminder that the most dangerous materials in the world can also be some of the safest in the right hands, and that power is all about control. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.